half life. Radioactive decay proceeds according to a principle called the half life. Half life is the amount of time necessary per one half of the radioactive material to decay. For example, the radioactive element bismuth can undergo alpha decay to form the element thallium with a reaction half life equal to five days. If we begin an experiment starting with 100 grams of bismuth in a sealed lead container, after five days, we will have 50 grams of bismuth and 50 grams of thallium in the jar. After another five days, then from the starting point, one half of the remaining bismuth will decay and we will be left with 25 grams of bismuth and 75 grams of thallium in the jar, and so on. As illustrated in the figure, the reaction proceeds in halves, with halves of whatever is left in the radioactive element decaying every half-life period. So the fraction of parent materials that remains after radioactive decay can be calculated using the equation fraction remaining is equal to 1 over 2 raised to n, where n is the number of half-lives elapsed. So in the case of bismuth, n is five days. So the amount of radioactive materials that remains after a given number of half-life is therefore amount remaining is equal to original ma amount times the fraction remaining. So the decay reaction and half-life of a substance are specific to the isotopes of the element undergoing radioactive decay. For example, bismuth 210 can undergo a decay to to thallium 206 with a half-life of 5 days. The bismuth 215 by comparison undergo better decay to polonium 215 with a half-life of 7.6 minutes. The bismuth 208 undergoes yet another mode of radioactive decay called electron capture with a half-life of 368,000 years. So this table show some example of half-lives. So the quantity of radioactive nuclei at any given time will decrease to half as much in one half-life. For example, if there are 100 grams of californium in a sample of sometimes after 800 years, there would be 50 grams of californium 251 remaining. After another 800 years, the total of 1,600 years, there will be only 25 grams remaining. So remember, the half-life is the time it takes for a half of your sample, no matter how much you have to remain. Each half-life will follow the same general pattern as Californium 251. The only difference is the length of time it takes for half of a sample of decay. So this graph is exponential graph.
So, example problem. If there are 60 grams of neptonium-240 present, how much substance will remain after 4 hours? And the half-life of neptonium-240 is 1 hour. So, answer. The remaining mass of neptonium-240 is equal to the original amount, 60 grams, times the fraction remaining, which is equal to 1 over 2 raised to 4, wherein 4 is based on the 4 hours it takes, or the span for, the, for this reaction. So after 4 hours, only 3.75 grams of the original 60 gram sample would remain the radioactive isotopes neptonium-240. Another example. A sample of actinium-225 originally contained 8 UG. After 720 hours, how much of the original actinium-225 remains? So the half-life of these isotopes is 10 days. Solution. So we have first to determine N or the half-life. So both time units must be the same. So we convert 720 hours into days, which is equivalent to 30 days. And to get N, we divide 30 days by 10 days. So we have N is equal to 3. Now remember the first example wherein it takes 4 hours and the half-life is 1. So if we divide 4 by 1, we have value of N of 4. Now back in this example, so we have now N is equal to 3. So how much actinium is being remain? So using the formula, let's multiply 8 to the fraction remaining. So after 720 hours, we have remain of 1 UG. Now it's your turn to do this example, uh, to do this problem. Write your answer in the comments section.